already, I barely noticed. Welcome, my muggle friends. I remain your host and guide, the one who is known as Funky Monkey. <laughs> Did you think that the tale of Harry Potter was so soon finished? I can tell you now that it is not. No, indeed, we are far from over. But I shall not delay. Instead, I shall begin this next chapter of the incredible tale of Harry Potter. The Chamber of Secrets. Released in November of 2002, The Chamber of Secrets picks up the tales the school holidays come to an end. A new defense against the dark arts teacher, a family of giant spiders, and even a house elf await young Harry as he returns to Hogwarts for a new year of wizarding action. So grab your wand, sacrifice a sock, and mind the Whomping Willow as we delve into the Chamber of Secrets. We open to find our hero now has the joy of his own room. Meanwhile downstairs, Vernon Dursley entertains a client. Which would go without a hitch, but for Dobby, house elf of the Malfoys. Now why, you might ask, would the Malfoys, noted wizard snobs, care in the least for the well-being of Harry Potter? Well, you'd probably have to look to the books for an explanation, because it isn't explained here. But despite the dreadful Dursley's best efforts, Ron arrives to rescue Harry. Hiya, Harry. Harry arrives at the burrow, home of the Weasley family. And off to Diagon Alley, via the modern magical miracle of flu powder. Well, it beats apparating. Oh, you'll find out. But not just yet. But oh dear, Harry mumbles his destination. Diagon Alley and ends up in Nocturne Alley instead. Luckily, it's only one great down, and after our heroes are reunited, We hope you'd only gone one great too far. We meet Gilderoy Lockhart. Ah, Lockhart. Quite superficially charming. But we'll find out his dark secrets soon enough. And Lucius Malfoy, Draco's father. And we'll be seeing rather more of him as well in the coming weeks. Harry heads for the gateway to the Hogwarts Express, but he and Ron are confounded. Never knowingly defeated, they commandeer the Weasley-mobile and set off after the train. And their arrival at Hogwarts is no less shambolic. Sound idea, lads. Pity about the execution. Solid five from me. After that debacle, Harry settles into his second year of wizarding. And just look who the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher is! I begin to tire of all this Lockhart. Onward! The plot kicks in one evening, as Harry is serving his punishment for the harebrained scheme with the magic car. A mysterious voice leads to a mysterious message, and the caretaker's petrified cat. Oh dear, what a scene of horror. Let's move on quickly. Professor McGonagall relates the tale of the Chamber of Secrets. In summary, each of the student houses at Hogwarts was named after one of the founders of the school. Salazar Slytherin was somewhat of a racist or mugglist, if you will, and he wanted only purebloods to be taught there. And so he left a secret chamber to an unnamed heir. Believing Malfoy to be the heir of Slytherin, our heroes resolve to brew a Polyjuice Potion. Meanwhile, Quidditch! But a tampered bludger takes out Harry's arm. And Lockhart's not magic only makes things worse. Well, uh, that can sometimes... Ah, Lockhart, Lockhart, Lockhart. It's only your dark, dark secret that keeps you from being found out. That night, the voice appears again. And so our heroes begin the process of brewing the Polyjuice Potion. In light of the opening of the chamber, the faculty set up a dueling club. And first to square off, Harry and Draco Malfoy. Malfoy conjures a snake, 
and Harry shows off a rare talent. But how is it that young Harry Potter has such a command of snake language? Well, we'll get to that. Christmas rolls around, and the potion is finally ready. Harry and Ron drug their marks and make the switch. And while Malfoy isn't the heir, he does offer up some good information. You'd never know the Weezys were pure bloods, the way they behave. The last time the Chamber of Secrets was opened, a mudblood died. Harry finds the diary of Tom Riddle. Tom Marvolo Riddle. Here's a hint. It's an anagram. And within its pages, our pint-sized parcel mouth discovers a terrible secret. Monsters don't make good pets, Hagrid. Monsters don't make good pets? <laughs> Hagrid's devoted his entire life to proving that little observation wrong. And then Hermione is petrified. Harry and Ron have had enough and confront Hagrid. Do you know who's opened the Chamber of Secrets? But oh dear. Harry and Ron follow the spiders to the lair of Aragog, who offers his own take on the unfolding mystery. Hagrid never opened the Chamber of Secrets. It is an ancient creature we spiders fear above all others. But his children are hungry. Luckily, there's life in the Weasley Mobile yet. And even in stasis, Hermione has one last gift for our pint-sized pair. The monster in the Chamber of Secrets is a basilisk. Basilisks. Terrible things. Kill you with a look. And Gilderoy Lockhart's bluff is called. Weren't you saying just last night that you've known all along where the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets is? Yes, friends, the time has come to divulge Gideon Lockhart's dark secret. You see, his only real skill is with memory charms. As in, wiping people's memories after they've been far braver than he ever could be. And so the stage is set for another epic confrontation as Harry, Ron and Lockhart make their way to Moaning Myrtle's toilet block. You sure you don't want to test it first? No! Outside the chamber, Lockhart grabs Ron's wand. Ron's broken wand, that is. <laughs> ha! Serves you right, you preening braggart. But when Harry encounters the memory of Tom Riddle, the truth is revealed. As poor Ginny grows weaker, I grow stronger. Yes, my muggle friends. Allow me to reintroduce you to our main villain, Mr. Tom Marvolo Riddle, alias the Dark Lord Voldemort. Riddle unleashes the beast, but a gift from Dumbledore is, of course, more than it appears. Harry beats down the basilisk and the book. And so, all is well at Hogwarts, and we draw this chapter to a close. And so we close the book on the Chamber of Secrets, our second adventure with Harry Potter, and usher it once more unto the House of Love. The sense of wonder from the first film still pervades, even as darkness creeps in at the edges, and we discover an undercurrent of racism that will pervade later episodes. The Dursleys are as dreadful as ever, even if they've given Harry his own bedroom, and Branner's blowhard Lockhart is, as one might expect, all teeth and no trousers. Where this film falls down is that it is long. 
Two and a half hours is a long sit, and once the villain is dealt with, the film runs out of puff quite quickly. But up to that point, the pace is kept going with Quidditch, and Polyjuice potions, and body swappery, and all of the mayhem that magic provides. This is still the light and fluffy world of magic and wonder. It's just a pity that the next film will take us down a darker path. <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let us reconvene in seven days, and prepare to meet the Prisoner of Azkaban. Spellcasting! D-I-S-M-I-S!